Welcome back to another episode of Murder of the Grey State. <clears throat> so there's, uh, we have an interesting episode tonight. We're going to be analyzing mostly emails. We're going to go over the timeline. That's the big thing we want to look at is the timeline and how things line up. So I didn't update the timeline with the information we talked about. I actually just realized this and so glad I did. Tonight it was mostly going to be going over things. We we're going to go and pick and choose and see what everybody was going at. I want to look at more on the contracts, um, emails, things like this. We want to go and look at these back and forth emails and what they really mean um, for the timeline, what it really means for David's sanity, um, what's going on really. I mean, with sanity, we can kind of, can't. I guess we can't really argue that with contracts per se, right? Somebody can come off as very, very sane and actually be absolutely batshit crazy, right? So there's that, of course. But <clears throat> we're going to look tonight into this gray state deal, right? When this took place and then when the emails were taking place with um, uh, Loman Abdo, with Adam Galason and uh, David Crowley. Then we're going to be looking at the invoice, um, the dates on this. We're going to, time is basically our best friend in this case. Time, math, science. This is, I mean, full on case, but time is really our friend here. Hey, Sophia, how's it going? So we're going to be looking a lot um, at phone calls. We're going to be looking at, um, you know, there's in the search history we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at what, what took place during these specific times, what they really mean. So if there's anything you guys want to go and like, you know, let's let's look into this further, right? Let's go ahead, put it up in chat. Let me know what's going on, what you guys are thinking here. Let's go with it. Um, as usual, this is just kind of uh, just take aim and go. You know, just start firing at it. Let's go. For it. Yeah, that's probably a bad joke, but still, besides the point, we want to just keep going for it, right? We want to still try and dig and dig and dig and dig as much as we possibly can until we literally can't dig anymore. Okay. So first thing I want to start at is actually in July, and we're going to be doing a little bit of time jumping here, um, but July 25th specifically. So I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with the contract um, with uh, Meg and David Crowley. I'm going to bring that up right now because it's on the 25th here. And you'll see we have a journal entry here. So I want to look at that first so we can kind of set a mood, okay? So we're looking for July. Let's go ahead and skip right over to July. As you can kind of see what's going on with David's life at this point. Um, like this photo is a little weird, if I'm being honest. Um, this is a typical brony slash school shooter type thing that would usually happen. But David's a parent. This, this means something a little different, I think, but I don't know, 100%, I can't verify that. But based on his, uh, on how he's handling things, I would definitely say, it's probably fair to say. All right, let's keep going. 24th, it's just June still. All right, now we're into July. Uh, let me see, I wanna make sure. Okay, nothing in chat, perfect, perfect. So we're looking at the 25th, and we know we've got a journal entry for that. Twenty-fourth. So let's just start here. Okay, get a picture of uh, David is taking a picture of Kamel. It says the people we are becoming ast uh, astonished by the accomplishments of our past. Now, what we can take from this, the photo means basically diddly. Um, what he's saying here kind of sets a mood. You can see she doesn't necessarily look unhappy either. She kind of looks a little stoic, maybe a little happy, right? But not really 100%. You can also tell this is a, uh, you can tell the, the make and model on this here. Uh, I'm not really going to get into that. I think that's accurate still, but um, I could be wrong. But still, regardless, I'm not going to analyze that right now. That doesn't matter. But you've got, yeah, you can always verify things like that. But this is right here, the address. So they're in Bloomington. So then we, we want to look at, okay, well, 25th, there's a deal for the movie, right? So that's that plays a part here. Okay, let's keep going. 25th. It's 11.39 a.m. It's a Friday. 
phone call of my life, an honest, appreciative present confirmation from my lawyer that I am in perfect legal and material harmony with the new universe to which I am connecting. In perfect participation or non-participation in further affairs, as I may specifically defer. If this works, I will be a rich man. If this works, I will be a rich man. And the wide world awaits whatever I may do next. Jesus Almighty, it's all at my fingertips. At the moment where the trap is set and bait is fat and prey comes knowingly entranced by the thing we created. My big pretend gray state empire is merely a thought in my head, and Adam stands guard with a battery of legal connections in the same firm that carries Owl City, and we advance bravely to the, to the, the west to be met eagerly by new friends and allies, completely free to create what I want in that world or not, but rich enough to do whatever I want. The appreciation of this moment is divine. Now, you guys can probably get this feeling here. He's happy as hell, right? Um, he's even, he's crying, he's crying out to Jesus' name. Very, very just, yeah, thank you, Lord, you know, kind of thing. Um, it's like a hallelujah moment, if you will. By the way, Kay and I have long since made up in a flurry of emotional and sexual readjustment and advancement. We talk nonstop about for days now about who we are uh, and where we are and where or yeah, where we might go. This is a good thing because this explain the relationship here. So is this relationship, is this rocky? They might have had some issues, right? But things are getting better. This is something we want to go and also take into consideration here. Is the relationship on good ground? This shows right now, I would argue yes. Probably pretty pretty solid ground here. Um, let's see where we leave off. Um, we feel roots being ripped up and out painlessly as we disconnect from everything that might hold us back. We have to focus. God, I feel like vomiting. We have to focus like never before. But Kamel teaches me, right? He's, they're in good standing here. <laughs> He's letting her teach him, you know, uh, that focus is easy, serene. She helps and guides from the heart like the perfect melody of my own frequency. And we turn to await the coming new life, laughing. An hour ago, I was ripped from great conversation with Kay by Adam, who I was a guest to remember was coming over to pick up something or pick something up. I couldn't be, and then that's it. I think he means to say I couldn't be happier. Okay. So, is this Adam Glaser or is Adam Shambor? We don't know. I would assume probably Adam Shambor. But, I digress. This is showing he's in a really, really good mood. Really good state of mind here. Okay. So, then we've got this. So, what is this email he's talking about? It's technically this right here. Okay, because you can see right here... This is this is all in October. All October. So we're not gonna be looking at this. We're looking at this. And this is what he's happy about. The option slash purchase agreement deal made or deal memo is made uh, this twenty fifth day of July for two thousand fourteen. Okay. This is for motion picture rights. This is a part we want to really take hold of for a motion picture, all right? Purpose, Meg and Grace State plan to enter into an option and purchase agreement for the acquisition of the theatrical motion picture, the picture, as, as it'll be referred, writes to the original screenplay currently known as, quote, Grace State, end quote, written by David Crowley, who will now become the work, most likely, in this right here. Option, now this is the option here, right? This is, this is where we're talking money. So you're going to see $3 million or $30 million, you won't see it here, right? Owner grants producer an exclusive option to acquire the world worldwide exclusive theatrical motion picture and subsidiary rights to the work, or the rights, right? Um, and then the option term is 12 months to get this done. Right to second option with nine month term if picture is in active development or pre-production. The option price, $35,000, not applicable to purchase price. Okay, this is, I believe, how much he would be getting paid, just outright. Section op, uh, second option price, $35,000. So either way, it's like, you know, either take you $35,000, that's what your option is, right? Purchase price, 5% of the total budget. 
with a floor of 300000 and a ceiling of 900000 less prior deductible payments. So basically, the best David's going to be able to go, go and do, he could have made money on this on the purchase price. They were going to go and give, he was going to get a lot of money. He could have gotten pretty stinking rich with this because this is what he would have gotten, I believe, up front um, and then after everything. That's what he would have got. Okay. Um, but basically, that's what it comes down to 5%. If you were to go and do a calculator, we do 5% of 15,000, right? But you already go and multiply that by three, you get about 30, 45,000. So he's looking at about $45,000, right? At best, 30, 15 to $45,000. So what he got, he could also, I believe, make as well. Um, I could be wrong on how that's all playing out, and that's fine. That's not the big thing here. This is not a thirty million dollar contract. Is my point. <laughs> End of the day. Uh, rights granted, provided producer actually produces and distributes the picture, makes all payments required to owner, and accept as expressly reserved upon exercise of the option as maybe. Oh, okay. So this is basically they're going to go and pay this. Either he's going to pay between three hundred thousand and nine hundred thousand, and um, that's after everything. I believe is how that works. So maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <sighs> uh, and except as expressly reserved upon exercise of the option, as may be extended, producer shall acquire the rights. If producer fails to exercise any of the prequel, sequel, digital, and audio or audiovisual rights within five years of the release of the theatrical motion picture, such rights will revert to owner, and owner's only obligation to producers will be to pay producer producers five percent of the net profits derived from the exploitation of such right or rights. Okay, this is where you start getting into things like the money. This is all talking about the money. This is why he's like, oh, I'm going to be filthy, stinking rich. He can make some very, very good money off this at this point, right? Uh, you guys got any questions? No? Okay, we're going to keep going. Owner retained rights. The rights of the work shall not include derivatives and ancillary rights to existing materials, e.g. Gray State trailer and footage, existing characters, the Gray State website, and social media through Facebook and Twitter. During option period, producers shall have right to license existing materials from owner, but shall not administer, modify, publish, or otherwise use without consideration and owner's written consent. So, we need to look at who is owner. Okay. David Crowley, an entity to be later uh, designated here and after owner. Okay. These are producer. So, you get the Megs are going to be producer. David and his company he's making, which is Grace, I believe it's called... Uh, Gray State LLC or something like this. Um, that is something he's putting together. He's going to get that put together, and there that's going to be owner, if you will. So that's why you see this rush. He's got to get this LLC put together. So when they start rushing off to go get all these things done, it's because David's still going through the process to get his actual LLC going and all that. Which is partially what holds um, Danny August Mason back a little bit, right? Uh, if you guys haven't seen those TikToks I did, um, I did a whole TikTok explaining the whole Danny August Mason, Mason Hendricks, uh, just the curious details about those those figures, and really how they had no idea what was going on. <laughs> uh, it's quite hilarious, actually. But so you've got David as owner, uh, him and his company are Meg is or the Michael Entertainment Group is producer. Um, the work that was written and created by David um, is known as the work. Okay, so that this all makes sense here. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, all right. So, owner written sequel, prequel, publishing rights. Owner has the right to publish, but not prior to the expiration of the second option, if exercised in all media. Producer shall have first right of refusal to sequel if it purchases work. Owner represents that no sequel exists at this time. Okay, so he's saying, no, nope, nope, this is start to finish, right? Um, but see, they're talking, if he wants to do any of this work, right? Prequel or sequel. So anything that comes before the time of this movie that connects with it or after, they're gonna, they got to purchase it first, right? 
Um, first negotiation, last refusal. Provided owner produces and distributes the picture, owner grants producer rights of first negotiation and last refusal to acquire sequel and prequel rights, reserved rights, and any other ancillary or derivative rights. Okay, this is a big part here, but this mostly has to deal with, okay, are they going to continue on? Are they going to, you know, what are they going to do here, right? So they're, this is the first go-to. If they don't want it, he can move on, okay? Owner setup bonus, applicable against the purchase price payable on execution of an agreement. Major studio, 5% of budget with $50,000 floor, $75,000 ceiling. Okay, this is how much you can make it. Mini major, 5% of budget with $30,000 floor, $50,000 ceiling. Cable network, so if it goes to like a TV movie, right? 5% uh, of budget with $15,000 floor, up to a $25,000 ceiling. Rewrites, consultant fee, travel expenses, so owner. Is, basically, this is a, there's a whole lot of stuff in here. Now, this obviously is an assigned copy, but this is a copy of it. Okay, so you gotta you gotta read every last little detail in here. Now we know that he can't fully move with it because there could be issues with Danny August Mason. Why he lied to the police? Okay, that's end of the story. He did. He lied. Um, so did Chris Peck, and there's also some uh, information that's um, either the police are withholding, which they're not supposed to, as the phone records show that David did not contact Chris Peck via text message from phones. Uh, that's what it directly says in the electronics report, right? So that's a lie. Um, so, but we know that Danny August Mason is technically attached to Gray State Project. Is he a partner of... Um, these companies, right, that David has put together with Mitch Heil, or, or is he not? Well, we know he's not, but we know that he is a big part in the writing process, so does he have some kind of claim on it? He could. He very well could. That's the unfortunate part. So that's why David is like, okay, well, so he's been talking, he's been obviously talking to um, Adam Gleason um, from Loman Abdo, and they're just like, yeah, okay, you need to get this guy off this. This guy could present a problem to your negotiations here. It's basically what's going on here. So that's why David's like, you see in these later journals, he's like, no, we need to go and get rid of him. Or he needs to join in with this and be okay with this. And we'll just bring him with the company. He's kind of torn. He's like, this guy's got to work with me or he's going to get the hell out. Essentially is what he's talking about in his journal. This is how this all breaks down. Um, if, if we have time, we'll get into that. But... Um, Wait, really? Do we have a copy of that? Because if we have a copy of the NDA, that we need proof of that. It's like, I mean, we can't... Yeah, as long as we have proof, I, I'm okay with it, and I would gladly love to show that. So that NDA needs to be there. But even with an NDA, it's still, I mean, we know that uh, Danny August Mason, Mitch Heil, and... Uh, David, we're working on the script with Kamel even. So Kamel even has technically a say in it. Okay. Yeah, no, if you've got it, then that's great. Yes, I didn't even know we had there was an NDA for it. So, But if there's an NDA, that also changes how things work for Danny August Mason. Because if he's got an NDA, he can't share it with another company is how that works. David doesn't necessarily have the non-disclosure agreement, but it also but that also depends. Is if is it the company NDA or is it David? created the NDA so nobody else can go and give this information out. That's the part that that's the trick of it because if it's David doing it, it's different than the company. Um, is David, all he has to say is I'm not doing it in the name of the company. Right? That's all he had to have said. And just doing this on my behalf. Right? Because then you got to get into the whole business side of things. Um, and their contracts and all this. If you have an LLC, which company is held liable and all this, that can all matter. Especially when it comes to liens and all this. Because if you've got a... Basically, if you're able to step away from... Oh, okay. Perfect, perfect. Um, let me go and take a look. That is good to know, though. Really. I 
Who's haughty by nature, by chance? Okay. No, I can go to it. Like I said, is it depends on the scenario. We don't. We cannot definitively say necessarily that any such people were there for sure. We don't have the full definitive proof of it yet. Um, I'm planning on most likely tomorrow. Um, I actually need to go back over the clothes there does appear to be potentially a footprint. Um, and I had to go over this several times. I'm going to be digging into that later tonight off stream. So if there's a footprint, then we've got things like we can go and nail a shoe, um, foot size, we can do all sorts of things with that if I'm, if I'm right. So, um, and then we can actually nail it down to shoe size on people. Because then all we have to do is get measurements, and then we know measurements, you know, for like a size 12 men's for, you know, for instance, or size 12 for female or whatever, you know, the, the different sizes with every single company. So that all way we have to do is find the sole of it, right, just the bottom of it, just find that, and then we can just go ahead and we can go and cross-reference from there. It'll take time, of course, just like the phone records are taking you forever. So I just saw the... Um, Well, I'm, I'm not ruling out Mason Hendricks yet. I, for me, he's a person of interest. So I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, I'm using the legal lingo on this. He, to me, the the people of interest for me are Danny August Mason, Dan Crowley Jr., Sean Wright. Like I said, just people of interest, not suspects. I'm not naming any single one of these guys as suspects. I just find them a little curious. Is all. Um, Mason Hendricks, of course, um, Chris Peck, uh, what's his face, uh, Joe Seaton, or sorry, Joseph Seaton, Joe, little Joey there, um, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I've, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a list of people that, they're definitely people of interest for me, so, as for could this have been done by somebody else? It's like I said, we already know for a fact they were murdered. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. It's 100%. They were murdered. Mold proves this. Um, on top of that, the lack of blood proves this. I mean, blood, you know, we can go over this as I, like I do every single time with this. There's so much that proves it's impossible David could not have done this. Um, the only, there's only one other option that starts to make sense. And then just stops dead because it doesn't make any sense past Kamel. So we know for a fact it had to have been Rania, or sorry, Rania. My, my apologies. Um, apparently, people have been getting a little irritated with me saying Rania instead. I, I do apologize. Um, they're, they're right, 100%. I'm wrong. It's it's Rania. Um, but little Rania's, uh, she she died first, and then it was David, and then Kamel. So. We know that's the order it happened, and we can get that conclusively from Mold. That's going to just 100%. That is the order. So that already shoots the narrative right in the head. That doesn't work. Narrative doesn't work. Um, next we have, okay, well, if David died second, then Kamel, maybe we're talking the pack theory. Well, how does she shoot herself two times in the head, two, three times, depending on how you look at it, times in the head? How does she do that? Not possible. Unless she set up some kind of device, but even then, where's the blood? Now that's where it also, there's the last nail in the coffin right there. That shuts that down. So we know pack theory is impossible. So they had to have been murdered. Now by who is the question? We don't know. Um, but if we can get a shoe size, now we can get a uh, size of a shoe, and then we can just start analyzing people of interest, right? Because they should be people that we should be looking at. 
right? We can go and do some more due diligence on digging on these guys. Uh, you know, once again, finding somebody's shoe size really is not a big deal, right? Um, it's not slander. It's nothing to see. Considering somebody a person of interest isn't slander. I just want to make sure I've got this out there so people understand. Um, that's the difference between that and a suspect. Uh, I'm not saying any of these these people are um, are suspects. I'm not. But I will say for a fact, for me, they are, like I said, for a fact for me, right? Just to clarify that for people, definitely people of interest for me. Um, but we cannot definitively rule anybody else out because then we've also got other DNA at the crime scene. There's another issue. Um, but we can definitely, this can definitely add into the motive, I agree. 100%. This could add right on in real easily um, because then you got to look at, well, who who has stuff to lose from this, right? This is back in July, so they even technically Mitch Heil we could throw as a person of interest, right? Why? Because, well, he was invested in this. Um, I wouldn't say he was fully invested, but company-wise, he was. So, but even then, I mean, we still have to we still got to take this into consideration. We have to go and follow into Hottie by Nature's. You said that's, uh, you said that is Mason Hendricks though? That is Hottie by Nature? If that is, then okay, interesting. But we know we have a, okay, actually you got something else right here. Oh, okay, fair enough. And the, okay, so this is, oh, I see it now. I see it. Okay. So we got this NDA, so we know that's a thing. Um, so that's that's interesting, to say the very least. That does fit in nice with the bureaucracy part of this. Is uh, It's all contracts and all this. You know, why do they have this in place? Well, they don't want this getting out, obviously. So that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So let's get back into this real quick. Um, what else are they missing out on? Uh, let's see. So let's just keep going. I'll just go down and we'll just keep reading. Rewrites, consultant fee, travel expenses. Owner shall have meaningful consultation with producer and any other screenwriter regarding any rewrites of the work. Owner will be entitled to consultant fees for services during option period or periods or production. Owner will have right of uh, first refusal to write any polishes. Owner owner's fees or fee per WGA for any rewrites or polishes. If owner is rendering services, producer will pay owner travel and accommodation expenses MFN with producer or director. And then we got contingent compensation. Owner will be entitled to contingent co contingent compensation amount equal to 5% adjusted gross on a MFN basis with producer and or director from all sources, revenue streams and exploitations. Credit. Owner will receive the following credits on the picture and in all paid advertising and promotion materials wherever, whenever and wherever the producer and or director are credited, except for individual award and congratulatory ads. So basically, he wouldn't get his name um, plastered on the congratulatory ads or individual awards as he is, he is the owner of this, right? Uh, written by, print, and script. Uh, screen credit equal in all aspects to credit according or accorded to any other screenwriter, director, or producer in accordance with the rules and regulations for authors of original work. So yeah, he'll get he'll be on there, but somebody else could technically come in here and be like, ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna go rewrite this a bit, and he'll have to say so on this. this. Is how this all works. So basically, what they're saying is, we'll buy your product, we'll keep you on there. But everything else, if we keep you on this project as screenwriter, then you'll be that. But we could just hire somebody else, right? Or we can add more, and there's going to be more adjustments, you know. And so it, it's it's kind of interesting. But they're they're throwing these little curveballs at them, saying, "Yeah, okay, we'll give you credit, but well, that's just it." Um, I, I agree with you on that. Um, they didn't know. And we have to look at the date on that, which was, 
Uh, when was this email? 2017, yeah. So, yeah, they didn't know about it. They didn't know until um, after it was probably even after somebody else found it. And I, I'm curious as to how they found it. Because David would have had to stash them somewhere, and even then I'm still curious about that person. I'm, I am probably like the least trusting of a few people um, because of how they got some materials. Tony Floyd is one of them. I don't, I got to just say it bluntly, I'm not a big fan. Um, I don't really, I, I find there's some shadiness there. I just don't know how much I can really trust Tony Floyd. Um, and the other one is the person who got the script. That was a newer one, um, specifically. How they were able to get that. And I've got a feeling I know how they did it, but I can't say for sure. I can't prove it. Not yet, at least. <clears throat> ah, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. <clears throat> but, um... Maybe my, my hunch is incorrect. But, I digress. Um, this is definitely an interesting thing, though. And I would definitely say this this proves that Mason Hendricks had no idea about this. Because, yeah, they're just bluntly, as if he is haughty by nature, well then, yeah, I kind of missed out on this. And haughty by nature will have a claimed videographer acclaimed what does he mean by that I, I you know i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna use definitions let's 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 go ahead and just use the definition of acclaimed praise enthusiastically and public oh jeez well we know he isn't we know he has an ego so all right <laughs> he is a bit narcissistic but that's besides the point um, nobody believes me. That's fine. Go over and uh, check out the. I did a whole thing on <laughs> on him on TikTok too, uh, and Greg and I have talked about it. I believe there's still an episode where we do we do discuss the text messages between Greg and uh, Mason Hendricks, and they're a little bizarre because he's very very much like into himself, like. I'm the man, oh yeah, I'm the man, love myself. You know, it's like, okay, well, you, you like yourself, or do you love yourself? Hmm. <laughs> uh, he's a bit of an oddball, but, yeah, it's it's curious, for sure. So, I do appreciate that, though. That is very interesting. So, I'll dig a little more into that, as I'm, I'm curious now. Um, but, yeah, so we, we got this deal here. So, this is, this deal here has got all sorts of different things here, and... Basically, it's like, all right, well, we're going to go and um, potentially we could move you kind of off the set, if you will, or maybe we'll keep you on it, but you're going to be kind of a secondary kind of guy. You're the owner, um, but and you're going to have some say on some things, but we've got these other this whole other team over here that's going to handle everything, right? So so that's that's kind of how that all works. So... All right, so we got that one. So let's look at this first. Let's look at the legal invoice because we saw, we saw that these are in October. So that doesn't really work. So let's take a look at this. Oh, well, now we got this here. Invoice date, July 31st, 2014. Okay. Now here's the interesting part. This is not David's place. This is another address. Now it's funny because if you were to go and do, if you go and search into Kamel's phone number, it goes to this address exactly. Right? She also finished in 2014, uh, in December of all things, uh, finished up on, it was some kind of a personal, uh, I have to look at it again, but basically it, it comes down to her dietitian, like personal coaching. So she was adding more to her resume there, which is another interesting thing because, okay, well, she's trying to go and write her own book. Why is she doing this? Well, it's because she's starting her own thing on the side. She's got her own business already. She's got mind-body dietitian, right? She's still continuing that. 
but she's going at it a different route, I think. Uh, I think it's more of a book, and then, yeah, she'll do some coaching on the side. I think it's more or less what it is, but she's essentially trying to get a kind of like a secure area where she can go do, you know, write her story, or another story for her books, uh, things like that, I think is more or less what's going on, but could be more. But you also see this address here for David Crowley. Okay. All right, so we got this. July 31st, 2014, and he's already got this address, which means this is already planned out by this date. Right here. So let's take a look at the journal and see what it has to say about that on the 31st. Is there anything for the 31st? In fact, if we go on the timeline, it says two day one journal entries. Okay, 30th, 30th, 31st. All right. I have been, oh, and this is all from 7, 12 a.m. It's a Thursday. I've been thinking of it all backwards with my family, I think. To me, the split never really happened. See, now he's talking about this. He's, there's something going on where it's concerning his family. Now, this is the thing I've been trying to go and figure out here. This is put here for a reason, okay? He's, there's something that happened in the family that brought this up that really got him thinking about it. Now, we don't know what. Uh, but we know that this is brought up now because we know this is just before the birthday party for uh, for Rania. So we know that something happened during this time as well during August that caused a huge rift between him and uh, Dan Jr. and between Allison and Kamel, right? So we know that, right? Was it Allison and Kamel? I want to say it was Allison and Kamel. But there's something going on that split the family and now there's some rifts, right? <clears throat> so let's keep going. To me, the split never really happened. Not as a matter of denial, but I myself was in a state of bravado, masking a constant fear, so I guess I felt relief in suddenly counting a family or counting my family among the emotionally desperate. I returned to my own strength. While expecting an admittedly broken and dysfunctional family unit to function as a core of renewal, acceptance, and love. My receiver was broken. After all, I wasn't around when it all happened, and I wasn't around for good until three years afterward. We don't understand each other at all, making my relationships with them more fleeting, weird, and distant. I have not reached out to them in their pain because I lived a self-imposed world of pain. And my self-image was so inverted that I assumed if we were both in pain, you would always be the more experienced and capable. This makes me retreat to my inner reserves, hold my own counsel, and approach others with a strange, frightened fawning. Okay, so he's he's very he keeps his pain on the inside. It's basically all he's saying here. He's just keeping it all in, and he's just gonna go and just deal with it internally. Not necessarily a healthy way, but it it does it happens. I think every single one of us probably goes through this. This so makes me oh, I already passed that. I can't talk real with anyone. I don't know what it is. The army, I guess, being in not only combat but constant forced social situations warped me always preserving my own personality. For five years, living in a rotating battery of strangers and arbitrary authorities, constantly cautious, always violated, and upon my return, my family had shattered. Yet I, in the ways in which brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers are meant to understand one another, I expected the same from them when I, or, or when they, were not the same. I am happy, though, because of my core understanding of them, even though warped, they are the golden experiences of my childhood. Good and honest people. My shining heroes. See, so this, he hasn't got to the point of hating his family as much. He's just kind of like, okay, well, they're still good people. I love them, you know. Not the gray, sad uh, specters you see now. See, now, now you see it. He's like, okay, there's two different sides of this. And he's talking about this, this separation. He's dealing with it now. How could this have happened? Well... How about it, ladies and gentlemen? I have a readjustment issue. It wasn't measured, invisible success, because that I had. In fact, my work ethic and energy on film sets started hushed rumors and tall tales. So what does that mean? Well, that's when you have to listen to what these so-called friends are talking about. I'm on, on set, how he was. He very much just hands-on, he's doing everything. Well, you also see this through his journal. He talks about it. Okay. Now this this is part that people should be paying attention to. I don't think a lot of people do. Is he's talking about his family life here, and he shows there's a separate version of these. 
before he left, before the whole split. Love these people. These are great people. Now they're just, ugh, they're a mess. And he doesn't know how that happened. What caused it? So if this is something that when, you know, that's been rumored that something had happened with Dan Jr., right? Uh, at some kind of a summer camp or something, you know, we don't have any definitive proof on this yet. And even then, it, could it matter to this? Doesn't seem to really matter too much with David at this point. He doesn't really understand it. So is this just a tall tale? That that happened? Who knows? But, like I said, I don't think that necessarily matters because David is seeming like he's like, I just don't know what, what the hell, you know? Next one we got. It's at 10.28 p.m. Lately, I feel like I'm slipping into a slow insanity. Time spins pointlessly and every day is so nice. I struggle to catch hold and make sense of anything on its way by me, but there are big things coming to look forward to. Jesus. My dreams are changing. I feel a nightmare coming on. Sleepy now. Camille is warm beside me. What a treasure she is. Showing his relationship with her. He is very, very grateful and thankful for her. She is, she's, in a way, his rock. She keeps him whole. Okay, that's what happens. In a strong marriage, that's what happens. They were building up on something, and it's all working out. It's all going really, really well. Okay? This is, this is the big thing we want to take from this. These journal entries, they're there for a reason. I put these here for a reason, because these are going to be, these are things we want to go and reference. They're good reference points. So, all right, let's get on to the next part. <clears throat> so let's go to August 1st. I want to look at this, a little bureaucracy going on here. But we know that Camille received her final payout from a 401k plan uh, at $1,625.30. Why she's cashing out her 401k plan, I don't know. Um, that is curious. But, once again, maybe they need the money, a little extra money so they can go and push for her, her book, right? Books are expensive to make. So now we're going to go to, what was it? Oh, and also, wanted to show this off real quick. Uh, this one right here, I got the, I got, I know who it is now for Zakaria game. So for those that have access to the spreadsheet, you'll see this. Uh, I added quite a bit more, just like there's some more things. I also want to go and just reach out right now just to go and show off. It's very, very interesting. He has a lot of people on here that had connections in the film industry in Minnesota, um, and some in LA, but Notice this, Vista Insurance. Does anybody know what the connection to David and his family are with Vista Insurance? I'm just gonna ask, I'll give you guys a couple seconds and I'll let you ponder that if you guys don't have the answer. I wish I had the Jeopardy theme right now. I'm just gonna give you guys a hint. The answer is up here. And it's Anjum. Anjum Malam, if you were to look into his background, Vista Insurance. That's him. That's where I believe this is coming into. But now we gotta we gotta ask who is Kim Missian? Okay. I'm not gonna show numbers, so for those that are interested in that, I, I'm not gonna show that. For those that have access, you can go see that. But just but don't uh, don't adjust, please. <laughs> okay, so a little interesting stuff here. I did add a few more in here. The other one that was really really interesting is this one here. It's the Child Rescue Association of North America. For those that are not familiar with this, I've already covered this once. I'm going to do it again. I briefly touched on it um, last time. This is a human trafficking. Association. It's some it's an anti-human trafficking association, I should say. Um, these are where you get like former military members and um, social services and all this. They're basically here and they're just going. They're stopping it. Um, but it's funny because we were to go through and I'll show you guys. 
I believe it's on the old phone numbers timeline. Let's take a look. Here it is. So here, here is, you see them contacting David in July. I haven't even finished getting all this, as you can see how far back this goes. I'm still working on it. It's split because now I've been having to go back and um, and actually adjust things. Okay, um, like there was unknowns in all this. Um, just to show this off right now, you can see right here. I've knocked it out out of the ballpark. I'm not going to say how much, and not going to say how how many numbers I have left to look up. I left this just like this on purpose. Um, but for those that have access, you can take a look. It's in the phone number directory. You'll see how many we've got left to look up so far. I got to go and still finish going over the old numbers. But anti-human trafficking. Now he's in contact with them. Now who else do we see that was killed shortly after? We're all suicided to be more specific. There's a few other people that got involved with anti-human trafficking organizations and charities. And they're dead. I've also heard the argument about uh, Kurt Cobain being tied in with it too. So what's David's connections to them? Well, it's this. Anti-human trafficking. This is where you start getting into the Fort Hood stuff. Because Fort Hood is notorious for this. Child prawns and all this. They've made their way through Fort Hood. They've had soldiers. And when I say soldiers, I mean um, people are enlisted folks that were at Fort Hood, stationed, and got involved with some things. Human trafficking, and then not to mention, you've also got uh, the company that's tied uh, with, uh, I think it's Cerberus Management, Wealth Management or something like this. Um, they go back and you see the connections to LOL toys, right? Those uh, the LOL dolls. And if anybody's looked into those, then you start seeing the grooming of children if you will. So this leads back to that. Now, wouldn't David be against that? More than likely. If he knows what's really going on, if he knew, and that's back in 2014, you know, 2013, 2014, if he knew what was really going on at that point, then yeah, I could assume he would be fully against it. Right? Plus he has a daughter. Why would he be for it? Right? <clears throat> Alright, any other questions so far? Anything? Anything you guys like to add? Do we continue on? Okay. So we're going to go look at August 1st. All right. So she, uh, one day one journal entry. All right. This is uh, Friday, August 1st, 9.04 p.m. And it's a picture of Kamel and Rania. Um, most likely, uh, it looks like uh, Kamel might be reading a story, like a bedtime story, and it looks like it's late at night. She's in her pajamas. <clears throat> so, spent today going over old photos and stories, army stuff, things Kamel hadn't heard. She gave me hours of rapt attention. Made me blush, you know. I don't usually like such situations or attention. I mean, I love adoration like anyone else, but she's something else. The story time is over, and... Redacted. So, <clears throat> what this comes down to, and if anybody is wondering, yes, I can read it. Um, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> but what this comes down to is there's things she's probably been questioning why David is like how he is, um, what's going on with him, right? She's going on six years, you know, his daughter's going on six years old. She wants to know her husband a little bit better. She wants to understand him mentally. What's going on? You know, what's going on in there, in that in the head of his head, right? She's just starting to understand. Um, you know, especially because, you know, she's probably wondering because, well, okay, well, he was in the military. Well, he's talking about his army stuff. So he's probably talking very, very, like, deeply, deeply personal about things that he had seen, things he had done. Hello. <clears throat> so this is this is a big part for him. It's a big thing for him to get over because, I mean, people that have, you know, this is from what I've, I don't want to say experience, but people I've known that have gone over um, and fought, um, they're, 
they're not likely to really want to relive those memories. A lot of them just like, no, we want to forget this. But some will talk. I mean, um, I have a friend who I've actually been talking to about this case. He's very, he seems rather interested about it. Um, but we've talked about it, and he's been telling me stories about um, Iraq and Afghanistan, and all this, and what's going on, what went on over there, some of the things that you know he had done, and all this. And I mean, he's just very open with it. He's like, look, you know, it's okay. Um, you know, this this is stuff I did. I didn't, uh, you know, this is my orders. I had to do it. So I'm trying to find out maybe if he knew him. And it's so far so good. It looks like he might have actually known David Crowley, which is going to make this a lot more interesting. So, <clears throat> so this is this is a big deal here. So now we're seeing that okay, she's kind of like you know, she's learning more about David. Does that have anything to do with? The payout of the 401k? No. Okay. So, next up, what do we got? We've got this email here. So, we're going to go, and this goes from bottom up. So, yes. It's a little weird to read, but we're going to read it that way because that's how it all works. <laughs> all right. So, on Monday, October 27th, 2014, let me go ahead and go all the way down to that on here. Uh, what day was it again? 27th. All right, so now we have things to look at here. What happened on the timeline here? So, we need proof of this, but David allegedly contacted David Kirk West on Facebook and asked if he would like to produce the web series scenes that would have been filmed in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, I believe David Kirk West, I believe he was in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, already so he's already established up here so I think that's what was going on but once again we need to provide proof this it requires proof did this conversation happen okay 504 p.m. we get a call from Scott Hussaby which is an attorney calls Kamel 25 minutes and 41 seconds they talk okay and then at 749 p.m. David calls Kamel from the new phone to her new phone. They talk about 25 seconds. 7.54, Kamel gives David a call from her new phone to his new phone. 30 second call. 8.48 p.m., Heidi Lish calls Kamel, uh, or calls her new phone. They talk for a minute, 58 seconds. All right, so we don't know what these conversations are about necessarily. Scott Hussaby, this this raised red flags for me, but then you start looking at Scott Hussaby and it couldn't. It doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It doesn't mean like, oh, it's divorce, divorce. No, it doesn't really mean that. Okay. So what happens on the 27th with this? Adam sends David an email. Hey, David, no worries and no problem. I'm in New York and I don't have the, fl uh, the files at my fingertips. But let me see if I can retrieve the email packages I sent to Mitch to get the process started. I'll be able to do that later this afternoon. Where are things otherwise? Hope you are well. And it's directly from his iPhone. Okay, so we get that 7.29 a.m. It's October 27th. So why is Mitch still part of this? Is this for the LLC? Well, let's keep going. So David responds at 8.25 a.m. on October 27th. It's a good uh, hour after. Adam, again, I have that, pa that file package. It's incomplete. There's only one doc on GSTR, which is a gray state to rise, that indicated you filed for the LLC. There's another officer named who I don't recognize and nothing that I can find filed with the state to get an EID, an employer's uh, identification, right? Gray State LLC exists, you're named as the officer, and I have absolutely no documents on it. I just need information from you, what the hell is the real situation with these LLCs, and what I'm supposed to do to untangle the mess. I, it can wait until you're back, but I have been asking about this for a few months now. Now, this matters, okay? This right here matters for one reason and one reason alone, okay? So, we gotta go back to this. I believe it's right back here. Uh, where was it? Let me find it real quick. Get in our PDFs, and we need to go and look at this. I believe it was this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 
This is where it matters. It matters to Danny August Mason. He needs this information. But you remember, Robert Hoyt, that's another person, it's a very, it's a close friend to, um, to Danny August Mason. If you were to look in the Robert Hoyt, there's some real sketchy things, right? That's when you start seeing Freemason connections and things like this, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, so, oh, whoops, whoops. So this is where this matters. He needs this. He's been asking him for months. Well, if we're talking months, we're talking at least two months, right? So October 27th to September 27th, and then we are looking at October 27th. What happened in Oct or no, not October, uh, August 27th? So what happened in August 27th? Hmm. Let's go back to that. Two day one journal entries. Daniel Crowley Jr. did, quote, something, unquote, um, that broke up his relationship with David. He wished to apologize and, quote, make things right uh, later on. Uh, date is not confirmed. We cannot prove this quite yet. So, um, but we also have two day one journal entries. So, this is where we need to go back to this. What does this mean? So, now we got the 827. All right, so Wednesday, August 27th at 6.01 a.m. Maybe I won't have success until I finish the story. Outline, at least. Maybe I have to really earn it here in the final stretch, so I always know the chicken came first. Okay, so maybe I don't hear back for another week. Yikes. I want to manifest the story now. <clears throat> He's rushing himself. He's getting anxious. And then he also says, me doing F all is about the same as somebody else working in a full shift. This is what I've come to realize for a few months of forced relaxation. Okay. He wants to just be busy on this, but he's been just forcing himself to just kind of take it easy. He's got a little money in this bank account. He's fine. Just need to relax, right? Doesn't talk about Dan Jr. though. He hasn't been really doing anything. And this is at 8.03 p.m., so he gave himself another 12 hours before another... Um, before posting another one in there as well. So, okay, so we're, let's get back to this, though. No, it was, it was definitely a good episode. It really was. Like I said, the course of the information was very, very fascinating. Um, for those that can't read the text uh, up there, um, they're talking about, or Sophia and uh, Nova are talking about a um, another episode that Sophia and Catherine put together about the clothes and turning the photos into photo negatives and analyzing the blood from that standpoint. And it gave out a lot of information, but the part that I focused in on the most was the corset. And the corset information was very, very valuable as well. I don't wear corsets and I don't really know anything about corsets at all. So, <laughs> um, it's a good thing because, well, they, they were able to go get some really, really quality information. It was very, very, I'm very, very appreciative of it because that, that made things a lot more clear for me when it came to her corset. So, and like, basically the blood on there and all this and I've I, I think I have a clear picture on kind of more or less how this occurred I think I think not 100% but yeah we'll, we'll talk about that later so yes, uh, yeah there's there's definitely some things about body placement that was I found very very interesting because also the wrinkles we talked about that too on one of my streams when I covered it um, the wrinkles and the clothes were really really interesting as well um but I, like I was saying earlier, I think I might have seen a boot print on there. So on, I believe it was on David's. I want to say it was David's. Yeah, I think it was his pants, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I very well could be incorrect. Um, and that's fine. I could stand correct on that. But it does appear to be a shoe slash boot print on his pants. <clears throat> and I, so I'm curious about because if that's got blood. Right. Well, in the, in the blood, it, it makes sense based on, if you look at how it, it would wrap around. So I really wish I had 3D models for everything. It's then I could just go and just visually just do it that way. But it's it's going to take some time to be able to get that done. Um, I'm not the best at 3D modeling, so. Could I? Yeah, I could also go and pick up 
Um, I could go and buy some models and put it all together myself, but what I'm planning on doing is actually making an actual set. So, <clears throat> well, the thing is, is, there's a lot when it comes to the blood that just, there's parts to it that just don't line up with some of the clothes. It just doesn't, it doesn't line up perfectly, you know? Why is there more blood here than there is on this one? You know, and things like this. It's just like, it's the amount of blood that's the big thing. Um, which is also kind of alarming. So David's also had an extreme amount of blood, but if you were to look at the actual, like, the placement of the blood, to me, it doesn't make sense. Um, <clears throat> because we're looking, it goes around his arms, so it looked like he was almost, like, maybe laying on a pool of blood, but even then, you've got the clothes that are scrunched up in a certain way, so... There's questions, right? There's multiple different scenarios you could have with it. Um, not a whole lot of them, but there are definitely multiple uh, scenarios that could have happened with the clothes. Um, could that course have been put on after? There's that. Um, could his clothes have been put on after? Um, you know, then you've also got, of course, the white dog fur. If you were to go and match it up with paleo, the likelihood of it being as abundant as it is is very, very minimal. I would even almost argue pretty much impossible. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's all good. Um, no worries. Um, like I said, this is, this is a, a, it's a difficult case. Um, so, we'll, um, we'll definitely, we'll be, we'll be, I'm sure we'll be definitely uh, running a lot of more, like, a lot more road bumps, especially the farther we progress towards completion, that this case was... It's a murder. We already know that. But once we start, be like, okay, well, we've got proof of this. So therefore, we now label certain people here, right? Um, then we've got to look at motive and all this. And we'll be able to start naming some things here real quick. Um, I'm fairly positive. Like I said, I was I was confident last year and look at how much progress we made. We can definitively show there's no questions asked, right? They are murdered. We now have the order. But that, of course, happened technically this year, so... End of the day, but it's still, you know, around the end of the last year, so. <laughs> no, this this case, so it'll be completed. We'll we'll have this we'll have this case uh whether it's reopened or not, having the proof. Spreading the word is gonna be the big thing here. And the thing is at that point, if we can go and definitively prove things, let's say for instance, then we were able to start naming suspects rather than persons of interest. That's where it's gonna start getting a little tricky, but once we can do that, they want. If anybody wants to take us to court at that point, good luck on that. Because now we've they have to reopen things. Because now we have to go and prove these things, right? The minute I name anybody as, as a suspect, I'd love for them to take me to court. It's it is an interesting one for sure. So. But yeah, it's um. This is this is rather curious. But back to what we were talking about here. This email here, he's talking about months. So he wants to untangle this mess, and he's curious about these LLCs. He's like, "Well, you're an officer, but I don't have any documentation on this. That is odd. He should have the information here." But let's continue on. Okay, things get cleared up a little bit. So Adam responds to David at twelve thirty three p.m. on October twenty seventh. He says, "David." I want to make sure we are on the same page here. Apologies for the abbreviations. One, there should be three LLCs. One, HH Productions, it's Hothead Productions. Two, Gray State. And three, Gray State hyphen The Rise. I did not form Hothead LLC. I formed the latter two. Two, I am not named as an officer for any of the LLCs. I may be named as the organizer, which is not an officer, but... Uh, the lawyer or agent that formed the LLC. Not sure who the other officer is that you are referring to. Three, there should be a member control agreement slash operation or operating agreement for Gray State, and I cannot recall if there is one for Hothead. This should or in four, this should not be a mess, uh, especially if Mitch and Danny has signed the disassociation docs. Now, this is the part to pay attention to. Danny refused. 
He's making a point. Danny is a part of this. The police didn't do anything. That's already right there. That proves this is a communication with a lawyer. Danny is part of it. He needs a disassociation doc. He didn't do it. I will be home late tomorrow evening. Can we chat on Wednesday? So this is where we go and we look on here. So we got, uh, let's see, Monday. So we're looking at the 29th of October. Let's take a look. Did he communicate with him? No. Not via phone call. Okay. So let's continue. <clears throat> David responds to Galeson at 8.25 a.m. on October 27th. This is going backwards. Oh, this is weird. Oh, okay, okay, I see what's going on. Okay, never mind, I didn't go backwards. Oh, okay, never mind, I need to go backwards. <laughs> Whoopsies. So, okay, we're gonna go and start this, that part over. So, David responds to, or sends Adam a uh, an email at, on October 27th, 7.06 a.m. My bad, everybody. Adam, I know you're busy, but after losing Mitch, I am completely dead in the water as far as Gray State and Gray State the Rise LLC information. I know they got started, or they got started, but I have one, or sorry, I have none of the information or documents. I need to get started with these LLCs. Like, do they have tax ID numbers? I have no idea where this was left between you and Mitch, and I really need the information. Cheers, David. Adam responds, 7.29 a.m. Hey, David, no worries, no problem. I'm in New York, and I don't have the files at my fingertips, so, so he basically, okay. And this is where this continues back on. So then he basically he's reassuring him. He's like, look, this is this is the information you've got. Okay. And then it's just the attachments. See the or the um, the responses. Okay. So rather interesting, but still October twenty seventh, seven oh six. And he's saying he's been asking for them for months. Still, pay attention to that. Months. Okay, so you're looking at least two months prior. Okay, we've already looked at that. Weird stuff going on. Okay. Anybody got any questions about that? Oh yeah, it, actually, Sophie, if you could actually email that one to me, that'd be fantastic. But yeah, I'm looking at, uh, if I'm being honest, when it comes down to it, yeah, I mean, like I said, the, if, the minute we start naming people as suspects, if anybody does try to go and hit us, right, we can prove these things, um, then we can basically, we can already, we're basically, we're going to be able to do quick takedowns on these guys, on whoever did it. Because if we're naming suspects, they're probably people we've already discussed, right? It would have to be, uh, more than likely at least. But we don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's another party involved. Maybe there's more people. Maybe there's maybe it's none of these guys. We don't know. We don't know who did it. But like I said, based on some minor information we can find from the crime scenes, we should be able to do their due diligence and actually be able to go and start catching people. And actually, that's why I've been doing the TikTok so adamantly about this lately um, and trying to make these quick little ones, just proving my points. Um, I, I want to keep poking the bears and see what happens. You know, let's throw this little... Uh, hey, look, David's, uh, David's innocent and somebody murdered him. Let's see who bites. I want to see who is getting nervous. And I'm open with it. That's fine. Because if nobody's being, you know, nobody's... Biting, that's fine. It's still getting the information out there. I can still dig. I don't need any of the, the killers to actually move. But if we're looking at somebody, let's say, for instance, it's a government hit, they're going to keep a very close eye on this. And if this isn't a government hit and we start getting too close to the people that did it, they're going to keep a close eye. We also got to pay attention to comments. If somebody is seeming like they're they're getting too defensive about it, is there something there? Is there a reason for it? All right, let's continue. 
<clears throat> and the next thing we got to go over is this here, which is the uh, Jason Allen emails. So December 17th at 5.09 p.m. So what do we got going on here? December 17th at 5.09 p.m. Uh, 17th, I said. Yeah. <clears throat> we have proof of it right here. So I'll be able to actually get rid of this. Uh, David reached out to producer Jason Allen and asked if he'd like to be the executive producer and help out with the logistics of the film. Do we have proof of this? Well, we've also got this. 3.50 p.m. Danny August Mason texted David's new number. David didn't respond. So let's continue on with this email. It was actually before this. Hello, Jason. I hope you've been well. Can't imagine much keeping you down. I'm pretty excited to be reaching out to you, I gotta say. As big and, quote, important, end quote, <clears throat> as Grace State seems to be to everyone, I'll tell you the truth. After all the tension in 2012 and subsequent invisible development and networking, it's almost it's now almost completely abandoned. Not by me, of course, but by the previous standing core team. Maybe the workload got too crazy. I don't know the personal reasons, but at the end of it all here, I am at the end of the tunnel all alone. The fans continue to gather, but they're frustrated and despondent. No one believes anymore. But that's all the illusion. It assumes I haven't been working 18-hour days for many years, building this into an empire and keeping it pure from outside influence, which of course I have been. Here's the situation. In a few weeks, you'll be able to watch a two-and-a-half-hour documentary, or documentary, a manifesto on the Grey State model called The Rise, completely in tandem with a few new trailers for a Grey State series that has integrated or an integrated storyline with multiple feature films. <clears throat> Grey State fans are growing at a rate of 100 to 200 per day even now, and when I get started, I can only expect they'll keep coming. My wife Camilla and I are quietly and fervently putting all this into place, and no one else, and I mean no one else, is at all involved in the project's decision-making process or finances. Camilla is helping me finally database the network of professionals, actors, and concerned citizens, basically the wealth of the, in of the interest Grey State has drawn over the years in the form of pledges of service, real industry contracts, with which you are probably already intimately connected. <clears throat> Hundreds of offers, dozens of sponsors, an email list of 1,200 and over 50,000 in social media contact, which is growing by the day, it is a time bomb of public interest, standing offers you wouldn't believe. Apps, video games, the works. I can't even begin to explain over email. I can't even keep it all in my head, especially with what's going on in the news and how keyed up people are for some kind of hope. I have no idea how much money is going to come together when this kicks off here in a few weeks, but it might be enough to get started on a series. Then independent features, or feature or features, running a common storyline, all run by an interstate network of committed individual professionals who can organize all these assets and operate outside of the traditional money-making sphere of media distribution, instead creating something largely made by the people and assembled by those peer few who control the project's finances, which at the moment is only me, <clears throat> which means no strings attached at all. Think of it, man. When you see the rise and the new trailers for the, for the hashtag Grey State series, you'll know what I mean when I say I have followed my heart at every step. I think you already do. At this moment... I don't even know what kind of people I need because I am exhausted from carrying and managing this burden for so many years. But you know what I need. Jason, you know exactly what to do with this. You know which cash agency I need, how to manage the flow of interest, which writers can come together, which states would work as locations for which scenes, actors we can reach out to, publicity people, the North Dakota bank you've been telling me about. I have a feeling you know exactly who to reach, who is appropriate to work with, and I trust your connection to the, to the ideals you have perceived in Grey State, since they are my own. Jason, please mull this over. <clears throat> I don't mean to assume you even want to be an executive producer, showing he he wants to offer this to him and i guess you don't i guess you don't even have the time to consider it but the offer stands i believe that you can translate the coming buzz into a trustworthy team and together we can create a we can create viable and effective art at your convenience sir cheers david okay i want to know how this was received too where we got this from. Response from Jason Allen, January 8, 2015. The dead bodies were in the home at least 13 days at the time Mr. Allen sent this.
No, that's incorrect. I'm curious who got this right here. Very, very curious because this is incorrect information. <clears throat> Good day, David. And this is at 10.54 a.m. on January 8th. Good day, David. Super happy new year. Uh, apologies for the delayed response. Actually in Bismarck, flying to Minneapolis in 30 minutes, and we'll have a two-hour layover. I'd love to call you while I'm awaiting my flight to LA so we can discuss all your recent developments and how to best approach the Grace State Project in 2015. This is him accepting. He's like, I would totally do this. Uh, let me know if you'd be available for a phone conversation around 3.33 p.m. Central Time. Uh, greatly appreciate the update. All your energy and passion for this is important for this important project. I look forward to getting more involved so we can put everything together. Lots of confidence, faith, and positive feelings for all the potential I can bring, and want to put some solid strategies in place. As soon as we can, in sync with the new Gray State Movement documentary you're, you're about to release in parts. Uh, as the movie is quite long, it's recommended that you make it a YouTube series, maybe in five parts. We'll discuss all and more. Looking forward to our chat. If that's a good if that's a good time, or let me know whenever is a good time for you. I'll be back in LA around 9:30 p.m. and available to chat tomorrow as well. Best wishes for 2015. Okay, this is important. This part, but we need to make sure this is. As we know this came from his email, most likely, but I'd like to know where this came from. Like that's my big thing. Who is able to get a hold of this? Um. <clears throat> so. The minute we find that out, I want the, I actually want the whole like original one, original copy if possible, because I want to know how they got this. Um, was this somebody that accessed this email? I mean, it's fine. They can tell me in private if that's what happened. I just want to know how they got this. I don't really care, but this is important. Okay. See, so, so anybody can look this guy up and okay, they can see his producer and all this. But he's trying to offer him this big thing. He's already saying everybody's already backed off. They've already got their own little other things they're doing. They found David was like, oh, he was going to talk over in Hollywood about this. And everybody thinks he's got this $30 million contract. No. Camille knows what's going on. <clears throat> it's those two working on this. That's it. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, end of this entire case, what was happening? Just those two working on this. Nobody else knew anything. <clears throat> this proves it. To some degree, this proves it. This proves it. But this is what also is interesting. So now you get to see what was going on. And to how long. And you get to see there's two people that were working on this. You had Adam Galason and Christy Rothenberg. <clears throat> okay. And this goes over everything, how much it costs for everything, when certain things were happening. This matters. These all matter for where David's business was coming into play. Is we need this, because then we got before the 25th, everything up until the 25th. Was there any LLCs created? Okay. So they're created because we got this to deal with. Because up here at the very top, Entity, entity to be later designated, and that, that'll be declared with the owner as you know David Crowley and the business he creates. So I'm assuming no, it was not created at this point. So, <clears throat> um, that's why this all matters. That's why this bureaucracy side of things it matters because now it plays a different part in the story here. What does this play though? Motive. This is where you, you can start seeing how does this piece together and who benefits and who falls short. These are things we got to have information for, and this definitely helps prove in, in, motive. Any of these Whoops. So. <clears throat> so that's, there's like I said, there's some things here that I don't think a lot of people were paying attention to either, which is fine. Is It's boring. It's the boring stuff, right? It's not the crime scene. We're not looking for blood spatter. This is looking at motive. That's all we're looking at. Because we can already prove for a fact that David was killed. We know that David and his wife and his daughter were killed. There's no answer answer us. We've already proven that. There's enough right there we can prove that. That's, that's all we've got. However, 
something we can't prove. Motive. We can't fully prove that yet. We can't prove. We can prove means, right? We know that the means. Well, with that was gunshots. We've got uh, heads that are gone, right? We have arms that were pulled out. This is where we have to go and check the clothes. Then we've got means. So was it gunshots that actually killed him, or was it something else? Was this a mauling by a dog? Now we have to pay attention to some things. There's some there's some key things. We know he wasn't strangled because he has uh, the bone. I'm trying to what it was called. Top of my head. <laughs> it's a specific bone in the neck. It's, um... Ah, uh, what is it called? I know it's supposed to be. It's basically, it's, it's the one that if you're being strangled from behind, uh, it'll break. Um, if somebody's strangling from behind, especially, like, strangling with, like, piano wire or something like this, you know. Uh, it, it's basically, it was, I believe it was named after, I want to say it was named after Garot, but, but regardless, it was a bone there, um, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, hey, and, uh, you have a good night as well. Um, yeah, this is, this is going to be proving motive, and we need to have that, we need to have means, motive, or sorry, motive, or means motive, so means is going to be like we, we need to know how they were killed. Motive and then opportunity. Um, we have to have that. Those three things. Okay. Opportunity. Who could have been in the home? Well, we know it had to have been somebody that was close with them. Why? Because there was no forced entry. This is somebody that was let in. Okay. Crowley's knew these people, whoever it was. And before anybody says anything, well, you're basically naming people as suspects. Nope, nope, not at all. Um, I'm just saying this is an obvious thing because, well, there's no forced entry. If there's no forced entry, either somebody was able to craftily break into the home using a lockpick. They were that good. They had a lockpick, I think it's called a lockpick gun, where you can just basically stick it in and it just unlocks the door and just quickly get in. But then you also get to look at all sorts of other things. If something like that happened, then wouldn't there be a little more rush, right? Could they have just been getting the kid to bed and then this happened and they didn't hear it and then they come out here and then they're basically they're rushing to go and get back to the room to go get the gun and possibility. But we have to be looking at things like, okay, well, where's the blood? Is there any signs of struggle in the home? It doesn't appear to be a whole lot of struggle. Could the could the home been rearranged to fix the struggle? Absolutely. How do we know this? Well, bodies were moved, right? They were in their pajamas, so it's either early in the morning or late at night. We know it has to be after Christmas. Presents are gone. Nothing under the tree. There's no presents elsewhere in the home. So we can really narrow down pretty quickly that it was in within a specific time frame. Yes, the hyoid bone. That is it right there. Hyoid. But yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, but these are things that matter to this case. So if we're able to prove that this happened, then like I said, oh, we, have, we have a couple more things to prove. That's it. Can we prove means? Mostly. We know how they died. We know we can prove for a fact it's murder. But now we have to get those three things. Means, motive, opportunity. All we have to prove. Once those things are provable, this goes to court. We can literally take this to court if we wanted to. Oh, and believe me, I do. I do. <clears throat> so, but like I said, this is... This is the big thing with that. Once we're able to prove those three things, this, this is going to get either reopened, they're gonna go and put somebody behind bars, or this is just gonna get, I mean, it's gonna get blared either way for everybody to hear about. This has got some really, really strange connections, all sorts of things. And you start getting the Fort Hood connection, and you start seeing former military, uh, you know, veteran who is, 
try to expose some things, but he's also in talks with anti-human trafficking groups. Something's up. You got all these big things tied in with this. Then you got him with his movie deals. Or his movie deal, rather. Then you get the strange communication about the LLCs. Now we need to make sure, was the LLC created before or after? Okay. So there's lots and lots of things. Lots of cogs going. But we can see them. Now we know where these cogs are. Now we have to analyze them. What do they all mean? What do they all do? What are they all tied to? That's how this all works. So. Now the thing I've also got a question to, because this is also, it was stated that it was also delivered to his dad's house. So is this his dad's address? Is this an address to one of his businesses? To one of his offices? And this is where it ties into communication with the family and friends. You get addresses, you have to tie them back. How does this tie in? Then you got dates. How do they tie in? You've got names. Who are they? What do they do? How are they connected to David? Now you have to look at the connections. Okay. So, David sent this December 17th. Text from Danny August Mason. Then you start getting into this search history. December 18th. Search history. What's he looking up? Things that most people will probably be like, oh, that's weird. 99% of you would probably look at my search history and be like, what the hell are you looking at? I look at all sorts of things, right? I'm trying to go get information on multiple different shows I'm putting together. I have stuff I'm getting together for my my uh, Real News Now um, with me, of course, tomorrow. Um, my podcast. I have... Um, TikTok videos I'm putting together on multiple other cases. I have work. I, right now I'm working, I think, about 13 or 14 cases. <laughs> you know, I don't have all the time in the world. You know, so I'm trying to go and get all this out as much as I possibly can. But this is my number one thing I'm working on, case-wise. Uh, video content, this is my weekend content. Um, but then, of course, you've got, you know, I've also tried to go and do hunting killers. I'm, I want to go and better myself. Um, you know, I mean, eventually, if there's and if there ever is a sponsorship, that would be fantastic. Um, is that would help fund the operation, or at least you know get this get this ball going a little bit faster, which would be fantastic. You know, if anybody wants to sponsor, I'm just saying, <clears throat> PayPal and Patreon, you know, do your thing if you guys want, of course. But end of the day, this is all you know. This is me, me and you guys funding this operation. It's not any sponsorship. I don't have anything. But if you guys were to look at my search history, it's worth it what I was getting at here. You guys would probably be questioning too. Well, why are you looking this up? Why are you looking this up? Why are you? This doesn't make any sense here. Yeah, you piece it together, the bigger picture. You see what I'm working on. It's like, oh, okay, you're all over the place because literally you're all over the place. Gotcha. Okay, so you're working on this type of video. I'm doing a video on adrenochrome and, and cannibalism and, and human sacrifice and the Black Mass. So will you find things in my search history about that? Absolutely. Will you find me listening to all sorts of different types of music? Absolutely. Those are That's a mood change thing for me. So I can get into certain mindsets. Um, that's how I've learned over the years. When I'm doing research, I have to listen to specific types of music to be able to do certain types of research. If I need to go look into, uh, there's going to be a lot of like dead body type of stuff. That's why I'm going I'm to listen to probably some darker stuff. Um, that's going to have kind of a slight oddity to it. You know, It'll be kind of fun. Still at the same time, so that way my mind doesn't go too dark. You know, I don't like going down that dark path. But I'm also not suicidal or homicidal. So if anything does happen to me, yeah, please investigate, please. Uh, pretty please. Um, <laughs> so I, w I won't answer in chat, but I will say there are ways. All I'm going to say about that, there are a few ways. <clears throat> um, I 
So hopefully that's your answer you're looking for. That's going to be the big one. Um, that's going to be a big key. So if anybody is interested in looking at uh, persons of interest, um, anybody is interested in looking at somebody they might deem a suspect, right? I'm not saying openly anybody is saying that, but if anybody thinks there's something odd and they're like, okay, well, this is really, really odd. Legally, we can't call them a, we can't call anybody a suspect. If we do, then it becomes libel, potentially, unless we can prove it, which I'm waiting. I just need a few little more pieces of information. I could possibly have something, especially if I'm right about the, the foot, uh, foot or, well, the footprint on the, um, pants on David's pants and on Rania. If I'm right about that, that's going to be two different types of shoes slash boots or footwear. I should have just said footwear. What am I doing? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and if that's, if I'm right, and that just happens to be one type of footwear because you got to remember her entire arm was ripped out of socket. That's a big thing here. Now how much, let's look that up right now. Um, uh, how many, or how much pressure does it take to rip a human arm off? No. The yield uh, a force for an arm made of muscle, not stronger tendons and ligaments, would be something like 7 to 30 at KN. So let's put the force at somewhere between 30 and 200 KN, a wide range, I know, but close enough for a government work, as Royal Executioner of France will attest. They're talking about uh, ripping somebody's arm off. So, it's a weird one, it's on Quora. <laughs> let's go ahead and see what Quora has to say. So how much force is necessary to rip off a full-grown human's arm? I can hang from one arm pretty easily, so it's more than 210 pounds, at least for my arm. Uh, force of at least 2,200 pounds, the capable of ripping off a human. Uh, okay. Uh, are we talking twiggy arms or the rock? You would say you need to re-examine your intentions here. Whose arm do you want dismembered? Just shoot him and go to jail. Ripping their arm off is... Uh, WTF am I talking about? Why? What made you ask this question? I will answer this question to my best ability as a means of understanding the strengths of human anatomy, but not to indulge you in some grisly fantasy. In my opinion, backed by my experience with medical science, I would say that it would <clears throat> it would take at least superhuman strength to rip off an arm from somebody's body, meaning at the shoulder level. The tendons and ligaments that support the arm joint cannot be ripped by normal human strength. I also don't think any experiment would be conceivably done to test the force required to separate the arm. What would the point of the experiment be? In my early career working at St. Luke's ER, part of a team of physicians who pitched in to stabilize a man who tried to remove his left arm from his body with a chainsaw. He didn't, he didn't fully succeed. The bicep muscle tendon was cut through and the arm muscles were hanging loose, the hand cut off, but the arm was still attached at the shoulder joint. In Shakespeare's England, they still practice a form of death torture called hanged, drawn, and quartered. <clears throat> this grisly execution was reserved for the most for the worst traitors. I really don't know how they did the quartering, but it, it is something represented as being pulled apart by four horsemen. Each extre each extremity secured by ropes or chains, and the limbs then pulled in four different directions until sundered from the trunk of the body. The film about William Wallace Braveheart as played by Mel Gibson, showed a fictional quartering, which was his manner of execution. The point of this, or of that, is that the power of horses is required to separate the shoulder joints, each pulling in the opposite direction. I don't know how that force could be calculated. Well, horsepower, yes, it could. Um, see, so we'd have to look at a quartering. Right? How much force are these horses exerting? And that's also on a grown human, not on a child. And then even then, you also got to look at when was this removed? You got to look at the state of decay in that section, but we don't have necessarily data on that. So that's the problem we get from that. So, but we know that happened. So we're going to be able to prove some things here real quick. Okay, I've got everything basically set up. 
So that way, just things have to be looked at in a certain manner. Once we get the calculations out, then we can actually start proceeding forward. How strong does a said person or animal have to be? It, I'm going to be honest with you. Is a pit bull or a little beagle, are they going to be able to do that? No. No. They're not going to be able to. The body should have to be in such a state of decay that it's basically the arm was already basically... It was done. It was gone. It was decaying too horribly. And I'm going to call BS on that. <laughs> so we're looking at probably a grown human, okay? Physically strong human. Um, I can't even say male for sure because there's some very, very strong females out there. I'm not saying just because somebody's a female, they're necessarily weaker. Physically, biologically, females are generally going to be weaker than biological males. Generally speaking, right? That's biology for we, you know, for you. That's going to be um, based on a number of things. Other than that, too, of course, you know, do they actively work out or not? I'm just saying things. If you guys are putting pieces together, that's all good. But I'm not necessarily pushing people in a specific direction. But it's something we should definitely analyze. This is going to take some strength to do, and that neither. A beagle nor a pit bull. Okay, just want to make that a blanket of statement here. Strong, a strong dog is not going to be able to do that very easily because then you got to look at their their neck strength. Is that, is that going actually going to compare to full body strength of a an adult uh, adult um, human being? No, it's not. Especially is it's going to. I mean, especially if there's it's a stronger human being. I mean, they're saying it's going to take a lot. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so because then you got to look at state of decay, and we know the bodies weren't that that decayed. They were decayed, but not to that point where they're going to be able to easily rip out the body parts. It probably, in my opinion, it would most likely um, to do that. We're talking this probably was if I had to guess based on the position in the body, this could have taken two people to have done. Uh, one weaker, one stronger potentially. Um, this could have been done with one person but then we're looking at footprint, and then you've got leverage, and then you're using mechanical force at the same time. Could this have been done with something else, like an actual tool? Possibly. I'm not saying no, I can't rule it out. But that was done. The arm is was severed from the body. We don't know how badly it was torn. And maybe, maybe we do. Maybe it's in the information, but we don't. I haven't analyzed it in that direction yet. So, there's that too. I'm just asking questions at this point, just giving my two cents on some things. <clears throat> Alright. So, you guys keep going over all of this, this timeline stuff. And what do we got? We know December 17th. He got excited and sent this off. This whole email here, right? Sent that off to... Jason Allen. And then we got this. We got this on the 17th. He gets contacted by Danny August Mason. And all of a sudden, now he's doing these searches. And granted, they only got the searches for this length of time. Why didn't they go back farther? That's a good question, see, right? I would have been like, I would like the whole month of December. Into January, until we got there. I want to know who has been searching the internet there. On every, on every device. I want all of it. And it's not too much to ask, honestly, because what happened before this? We don't know. Was he on the internet every day? Probably. <laughs> um, but you got to look at his, how he's searching for things. You know, you look at the time frame, you look at the time gaps. He's got a, uh, a little over nine hours of a gap here. Between looking at the Gray State Facebook page at 10.08 a.m. until 7.48 p.m. Where he's looking at, and this could have been, very well could have been Kamel looking, right? Potentially. Reboot your life. 20 mental barriers you should let go of. Okay. And then you got another just about three hour time gap. And now he's looking up Stalin executions on Yahoo. Or video searches of all things. And then he looks at mass execution of Soviet Russia. Yahoo video search. Keep it. He's trying to download the video here. And then at 1021, he's now looking for mass execution of Soviet Russia. Then he goes to YouTube. 
you can see how he's going with this. He's looking up massacres. Why? Well, now you have to look at his scripts. This is exactly why. He's, if you were to look at this, the, the murder that's going on in his scripts, the genocide that goes on, um, a specific scenes in his 2014 script, they mirror some things. He, it's almost like he picked and chose how things were done. You know, dissenters. That's what he's looking at here. Dissenters, uh, you know, just hateful types of acts. People they felt they these the people executing them could not trust them. They were they were on the opposing side. That's what they were looking up here. Why then, then you got this right here. Why does he look up Osama bin Laden's death? And then he wonders when was the death of it res of announced? And then he starts looking at NATO. Then he looks at depleted uranium and uranium-238. Well, this is a specific type of ammo that was actually poisoning people. If you weren't killed by it, you were sure as hell were going to be poisoned by it. It's nasty stuff. And then you got soldiers throwing medals at NATO. You can keep seeing what the, where he's going with this. You see how it goes. And he's coming from the military side of standpoint of things. How do militaries carry these out? Because the Katyn Forest Massacre... That was done by Soviet, um, by Soviet Russia. Their their military, their quote unquote the, the secret police NKVD. So why was he looking at that one specifically? And now why is he also interested in Osama bin Laden? Now what's the connection of Osama bin Laden in our country then? In our military, our government. Gotta look at that. And then you got the CIA connection. Now you start going down there. Now he's going down the rabbit hole. Gives us some time. About a three hour window. Or two hour window. Just about three hours. Yeah, going on three hours. Ish. December 19th, you start seeing him look at emotional soldier funerals. Why is he looking this stuff up? He's got death scenes in there. He's got to go and account for those. He wants to make them seem more real, legit. Okay. Keep going through this. But he's feeling sadness. So he's he's crying probably. Most likely crying through some of this. Why is he crying? He went through some crap. It makes sense. Doesn't necessarily mean PTSD. You mean his his search history? And looking at the script, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so but you see where he's going with these things. He's it's this is all about his script. But then we have this that appears in the middle of his search history. 7:22 a.m. Allegedly, David had texted uh, Christopher Peck, "Do you have any?" And around 1 p.m., David and Kamel arrived in Minneapolis to visit and pick up some marijuana from Peck. At 3 p.m., David and Kamel arrived at Renia's school to pick her up, the last day of school before Christmas break. Is there proof of any of this? This, I think there might be. There is zero proof of any of that. Let me show you. I like to show this off. December 19th. Let's take a look. There's no 19th. No cell phone activity at all. So if that's true, as they said it came from David's cell phone, that's directly based on what he what was in the police report. There's no activity here. Why is that? Now Danny August Mason appearing here makes some sense. Contract stuff, right? He wants to know why he's being why he's being excluded from this. He's trying to weasel his way out of it. He doesn't want to be 
um, you know, getting screwed on this. He wants to be a part of it. Every part of the way. He wants to be part of it. And he's trying to include his guys in it too. At least give me the rise. You know, that's what's going on here. But then he continues on. Looks up Black Hawk Down. Downloads the video. Looks up Act of Valor. Downloads the video. Looks up, looks, uh, looks up White House Down movie, the trailer. Most likely, I believe, downloads it. Plays it again. Then he looks up Supplication. That's a weird thing to go from. So, let's go look it up. What does Supplication mean? The act of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. What does the Bible mean about supplication? This is on vocabulary.com. To plead humbly. Although it is a noun, supplication comes from the Latin verb supplicare, which means to, quote, to plead humbly, end quote. While a supplication is often thought of as a religious prayer, it is used 60 times in the Bible, it can logically be applied to any situation in which you must entreat someone in power for help or a favor. So why is he looking that up? Good question. And then we got around a five hour time gap. December 20th, around 2 a.m. It's allegedly when this occurred. Ish. Um, and I need to go and find proof of this. I don't know how true all this is. If we don't have proof, this didn't happen, right? But this is what I've heard. So I'm just including hearsay. You guys do with it what you guys will. I'm not trying to slander anything. This is what I've heard. So if there's any kind of questions, please direct your attention to Justice for David Carley and Family Facebook group because that's where I got this information from. I cannot prove all this. However, we know that Colin Prochnow had allegedly heard sounds of possible gunshots coming from the direction of the Crowley home, but did not call the police. And he said it was around 2 a.m. or so. That's in the police report. We know that's there. Okay. The date Colin gave the uh, Apple Valley Police Department was 12-19, so the 19th. So we're here. Which, nighttime, would they have been up at this time? What's December 19th? Let's take a look. December 19th was a Friday. So could Rania, or sorry, Rania have been up that late? Possibly. I doubt it. That that late for like a six-year-old? No. It's not unheard of. My daughter's been up that late before. So. Sometimes they just can't sleep. So I get it. You know. And allegedly, based on what, uh, what we see from Camille, she believed that uh, Rania had autism. Could that have played a factor in it? Well, maybe. But she's still a six-year-old child, so there's that. I take it with what you will. Okay. But then you got him looking. At, if he did that at 2 a.m., why is he looking all of a sudden at Wells Fargo? We know he didn't do it, so why is this being done? Transfer and payments. Verify transfer. What are these about? This is where you get into finances. All this comes together in December very, very nicely. And then you gotta look at which account was he using. Sign on page, account summary, transfer transaction. So he's doing a transfer. And now he's signing in again. So he's signing in to two accounts. So it's going to be two accounts he's got access to. 
or somebody has access to? Could they have been killed on the 20th? Okay. I doubt it. This is before this is before Christmas. It wouldn't have happened. Okay. I have reason to believe it was after Christmas. But then you get these transfers. Why are they going through these transfers? And it's almost rushed. It's 12 seconds. Page refresh, possibly. All right. And then you got a little time after that. Verifies transfer. Confirmation. So December 20th was Saturday. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Which would have been with week three. Ah, would have been week four technically is how I have it, so. So do we see any transfers? Doesn't appear to be. It looks like there's a transfer here possibly, but where's it going to? We don't see any gains here. We don't see any gains here. We see gains here, but there's not enough to really cover all that, that big of a jump. We see just loss. So which account got any gains in this point? There's a transfer, there was no, but even then we can still look, the other one we can look at is how long did it take? Now we know week four, so now we have to look at the banking system, how that all works, okay? So we know from here to here, the 20th to 26th, there was no gains. So it would have happened during that following week. So Monday, where's the, the change? If there was an account transfer here, would it show? And that's where you have to get into the individual ones. So you'd have to go and break these down individually. So we're going to go look at this. Transfer. So we're going to look at deposits. Now you'll see here. We want to look at this right here. So there's nothing really from here. We have withdrawals. The ones we're going to be looking at are right over here. These are going to be losses, and here's gains. 615 64. It's David and Kamel. This is what they're uh, withdrawing from. It's going to Kamel's savings, right? Right there. Now we find it, so we know where this is coming at. So this is David or Kamel setting in their savings. Transfer into their checking. That's all that was going on here, right? So we can we can easily put a lot of this to just we can just shut it down. Some of these speculations. So did David transfer this money? Was it David come out? They transferred money here. So this is this is them up at this time. Now why would they transfer that if they're planning or if this, if there's a pack theory or if you go off the narrative? Why would David go and continue to pay? Makes no sense. You're not going to be around to pay for it. Who cares? Didn't really like his family, so if anything fell back on his family, didn't really care. So, why care? It's because he didn't want to die. They were not planning on dying. They were murdered. Further solidifies this. Now on the... He has no motive to do it. Things are going well. Then he starts finding these things. He starts looking at silver. Why is he looking at silver? He sees things that are coming. He wants to go and learn more about this. This is where you start getting into the really dark stuff here. He's looking up all this, finding happiness, suffering through, you know, finding light in the darkness. He starts to look into the coins, Gadsden flags. Okay. This isn't dark. Well, what do we got here? We know that Kamel was alive during this time where somebody had access. I would probably assume it's 8 13 a.m. Chances are this is probably Kamel, I would guess. Probably up this early, probably doing yoga and all this kind of stuff, you know, or her uh, meditation and all that. Um, probably got up, did this, bam, 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 bam. And then uh, got the banking done. 
David could have been up at this time working out with her. We know that because in the journal, they talk about that as well. So we've got all this is coming together. December is the easy one to really explain. It's a lot of things that come together. The rest of the time, you can't really explain everything. Not too easily. Now, we're going to be able to. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll be able to. That's not even a problem. Um, but let's just find out more about the stuff we do know, right? Uh, All right, so let's keep going. So she sent her last known tweet to Heidi Lish. In fact, let me look that up. I gotta go look this up real quick. I'll bring it up. Ah, there you are. So she sent a message, is what it was. She sent a message to, um, directly over to what's her face? Uh, Heidi Lish. It's not there. My point here is it's not there. It doesn't show on her Twitter. So we don't even know for sure. Um, about that. So I really need to highlight this. But still, 8.13 a.m. is when she allegedly did that. So we need proof of this before I can actually keep that in there. Uh, December 21st, now he's looking up Ursary. I'm going to go and do the same thing over here. And that's the illegal action or practice of lending money at un unreasonably high rates of interest. So, um, so, giving an interest rate of 30%, normal rates are at 15%. So what does that mean here? What's, well, this is an ursary. It's 5%. 5%. Hmm. 5%. So this is an ursary. Well, you know where we can look? He wants 10%. Gross revenue. He's rightfully entitled to 10%. David wouldn't even be making 5%, or he'd be making around 5% of it. But he wants 10%? Right. That's called being a tool, of course. So, any questions before we sign off? No? All right, well, then we will be back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning, to be specifically. We'll be back at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Real News Now. All right, so this is it's going to be a short episode, probably fairly short. There was things that happened, but a lot of it we can't confirm everything yet. If that makes any sense, there's stuff that we're going to be able to. Um, so you have a good night as well. And um, then we'll be back tomorrow night and we're going to have some more stuff to go over. Um, whether we do Murder of the Grey State or not, um, I might even just do another 
uh, Hunt Killer tomorrow night. So you guys are welcome to join in with that. Um, it's really good. Uh, I'm gonna go and do one I've already technically done. It's been a while, um, but I wanna just go over it with you guys and we're gonna go over some things. Um, you'll see why I'm gonna go over it. Um, it'll be a two hour show or so. We're going to go over it, so spoilers, we are going to go through another Hunt to Killer, another box. So for those that are curious about why, you'll see tomorrow night. Um, but there will be more to come about Murder of the Grey State next weekend as well. Um, next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there will also be shows. Um, they're going to be probably very short shows if we do any shows those days. Um, but there will most likely be shows that day, uh, those days. <clears throat> um... But we'll be doing some more, there'll be more data about this case, to put it that way, uh, most likely. So, But thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you guys tomorrow morning, or tomorrow night, depends on when you guys want to show.